Hey everybody, welcome back to the practice. Today we have a special guest, it's Hope. Of course, she won't let us leave her site because we've been gone for the weekend yep. with all of your leaders. And it was a fantastic time, I have to say. Yep. We had so much fun together, ate great food, lots of laughs, lots of planning, lots of prayer. It was just an amazing time. Honestly, we are so lucky to have this group of people in the South. So thank you to so many of you who wrote cards, encouraging cards to them. And thank you to the leaders for setting aside and getting the babysitting and doing all the stuff you have to do to go out of town. This is why my dog is with me right now because she won't leave us alone because we are <laughs> gone for the weekend. But anyway, it was a great time and we are glad to be back. We really are. Uh, we have such great people in the South Seriously. and um, mm -hmm. people who are leading um, all of our community groups, all of our small groups yeah. are just great people yeah. and they really love God and they really love all of you. So um, be sure that you encourage them and thank them uh, for their service and for their work in the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be great. Um, but you know, so here we are, it is the end of August Yay. and uh, summer is coming to a close. School has kicked back into gear. Uh, we are headed into the fall and yep. uh, into this last third of the year when so many cool things happen. I love this time of year and it's really so great. Uh, but there's also so many great things that we can learn spiritually during this time. And so for our video today, for this week, uh, we really wanted to be able to kind of talk about uh, those things and frame our minds, um, you know, as we are as a church, as we are getting ready to head into the fall. And uh, there's so many great things coming up uh, that we have together as a church. But spiritually, there's some things that, that, that we really want to grow in as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting because this time of year, this was actually, uh, you know, in, the, in, in biblical times when a lot of the scriptures were written, um, this was the end of the harvest. And so they've been working and growing the food all summer long yes. from back in the, you know, in the spring. You know, we've, we've got the Shavuot, which was the, the, the first fruits. And so the early harvest comes in in May. Um, but then um, all the way through the summer, it's growing and then we gather in the harvest and then there is the big festival called Sukkot in the fall. And that, that's when we're really celebrating and thanking God for the harvest that has come in. Right. And uh, so it's, you know, it's interesting when, when we look at um, the rhythms of life that God instituted for his people. There's so many things that we can learn from that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I think it was just, it, it's so tragic that Constantine and others in the yes. early church, you know, made they anything that was Jewish. Our, yes, we divorced Christianity our from our from our Jewish heritage, yeah. as if we don't have something to learn from what God was saying. Yeah. And um, you know, I just remember even over the years, uh, you know, as we've we've grown in our understanding of Sabbath, you know, people can have a response to like, well, don't don't put that on me, like the legalism of Sabbath, and nobody wants to have the legalism of Sabbath, but. What about all the beautiful lessons that we can learn <laughs> from the beauty of it? From the from, from the yeah. Sabbath rhythm in our life. Yeah. And uh, you know, and so this I think the same thing with these festivals. That's why we've been talking about them, you know, these last couple of years since we've been here, and I know your church has in, in other ways as well. But but we look at the way that God put these things together over the years, and there's so many great things to learn from that. Yeah. And uh, so I, I want to talk about this a little because this is going to set us up for uh, for the next few months. And I'm actually super excited yeah. about the next few months. The next six weeks in particular, yeah. I think, are going to be so awesome in our church. Time of spiritual growth and renewal. We're going to have an incredible celebration at our regional service on October the 9th. And, uh, but I want to give you the spiritual framework um, behind everything that we're doing and the why as we're going into that. Yes. So, if we can, I want to turn over to Leviticus uh, chapter 23. Let's go all the way back to that. In verse 23, the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord. So okay. here it says the seventh month, but obviously they're on a lunar calendar. We're on a solar calendar. Right. So ours equals out to be about the eighth or ninth month. Right. You know, it changes. The lunar calendar doesn't stay the same every single year. But this would be this time of year. This time of year in yes, the fall, right? exactly. Okay, so he goes on and he says, The Lord said to Moses, the tenth day of, of this the seventh, seventh month, month. So the same month. Right. Is the day of atonement. And hold a sacred assembly and deny yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord. Do 
Do not do any work on that day because it is the day of atonement when atonement is made for you before the Lord your God. And so there's this time of uh, atonement before God and when the priest would take the, the scapegoat and symbolically place all the sins of the people on the scapegoat and then send the scapegoat out into the wilderness. And he was taking the sins of the people away from, from the camp, away from the people. And so this was a time every year when people would come together and they would, they would celebrate that and they would prepare for that and have these sacred assemblies where together they were like, these are the sins of our community and we want to now like ask God to forgive us for all of those sins. And so it's a great time to, to kind of do some inner work and look at, you know, every year, even, there's, even in the spring, there's a time that we do this as well. But in the fall to be able to go, okay, um, I, I want to prepare, I want to like look at my heart and prepare my heart for really serving the Lord and living before him. So now then after that though, right after that, um, in fact, it's in verse 39, if you want to look there, it says, So beginning with the 15th day of the seventh month, after you have gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days. The first day is a day of Sabbath rest, and the eighth day also is a day of Sabbath rest. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in temporary shelters for seven days. All native-born Israelites are to live in such shelters. So your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So after this time of kind of reflection and looking inward, then comes this festival of celebration and the festival of tabernacles or sometimes called the festival of booths. And it is a, it's a seven day festival, like a really eight, eight day festival at lasts from one Sabbath all the way to the next Sabbath. And it's a time to remember God's provision and remember God's presence and to celebrate the harvest and all that he has done for us. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really special thing uh, to, to be able to kind of see how God put that rhythm into his people every year. Mm -hmm. And so we have a great um, service coming up where we're going to celebrate this. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about this more and more and kind of going into depth about all these things so we can get the spiritual lessons from these things that we want to be able to get. Right. I think it's the, this is a whole season. And I think that it's not just a day, it's not just a service, but it's a season. I think we can get these rhythms of life. God created a rhythm for the year in which every six months, basically, we are having this time of, of regathering either our thoughts or people. You know, this is the same, this, you know, in our modern day, we kind of feel the same, even though we didn't spend the summer working and gathering the harvest. We no. spent the summer going on vacations right. and enjoying the summer and going to the beach and longer days and all that stuff. And it's totally awesome. But by the time you get to the end of that, it really is a necessity to sort of regather. And that's why this right. season for God is called the regathering season. So it's a time for you to kind of get your mind about you. And it, it perfectly works out for us because we've all been scattered this summer everybody doing their various vacationing right. we come back and the school year started you know and that can make you like crazy because you're trying to change your whole schedule and get this kid to this audition and this this other kid he's going to try out for this team and then i gotta get oh my gosh we're supposed to pay for these uniforms and we're supposed to sign up for this and that and we right. got back to school nights and all this stuff you can feel crazy right so now we get to enter into the time where God goes, no, now we're going to regather and we're going to recommit. Right. Because from this time on, we want to take advantage of the consistency of fall. Right. Of the school year. Right. We want to take advantage of this consistency, which we haven't been able to enjoy all summer. Right. And just really settle in to the rhythms of God. Right. You know, it brings a lot of spiritual growth, that consistency brings spiritual growth. Absolutely, because the society around us is moving at an ever-increasing pace. Yes. There's more and more to do. There are more things to be involved with. There are more things to pay attention to. Your schedule can get filled up and filled up. God is always calling us back to a place of rest and a place of decluttering yes. so that he can have more of our heart. Yeah. And, um, you know, if, if you have not read The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, <laughs> 
by John Mark Comer. I highly recommend that for all of everybody in our church to read that book, The Ruthless yes. Elimination of Hurry. Yes. Um, I think it's a profound and just very um, important book, uh, concept really, just for all of us to, to look at. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we're, what we're wanting to go into, is like understanding that our primary relationship, our primary identity is that of sons and daughters of God. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so because of that, then we live from that place. And then the way that we live, uh, the people that we live our life with, and the way that we are as we go out into the world comes from that place. Mm -hmm. And God is always bringing us back to that because he knows how quickly we can get distracted from <laughs> that sense of identity. Exactly. And, uh, and so even in Hebrews chapter 10, I, I wanted to look at this passage and kind of look at all of it in, in this context here. In verse 19, it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And I love being able to read all those verses together because it reminds me that this is about um, us having the confidence to come close to God because of what Jesus did for us. <laughs> And then therefore I have a hope that I can profess. And it's from that hope then that I live my relationship with the spiritual family around me. Yeah. You know, and I know that this, this passage here, you know, many of us have heard this for many years. Let us, uh, you know, not, don't give up meeting together. And we use it like as a command. And then sometimes it can be, it can be weaponized at times. But when you place it within the context of this, it's the beautiful, uh, like the, the, the overflowing of your heart, of course you would want to be with people. And of course we need to prioritize our spiritual family because we get to be in this family because of what Jesus did for us. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage us to really think that way as, we, as we're thinking through our schedule for the fall and as we're thinking through our commitment to our community groups and the brothers and sisters that we're going through life with. That is why we want to have that. That's why we want to be intentional. It's because of what God has done for us and who Jesus is mm -hmm. for us, then it, and it brings us to that. It's so interesting that it's actually referencing this particular season. Right. The season, the Day of Atonement. Right. You know, as it's talking about this. So it's kind of cool. You know, this is a really great time of year to get your group to be able to, you know, reestablish their rhythm. Right. Because we know it can get crazy. We totally get it. Um, and recommit to your weekly identity group times. Right. You know, those can, they might need to change because all summer, you know, we're all like having fun, staying up late, right. you know, well, we're meeting at the park, right. the kids are playing, you know, that is such a great thing about summer. But in the fall, you might have to readjust, you know, right. you might have to make them shorter. I know for our group, we have to meet earlier and meet for a shorter period of time because we've got a few teachers in our group and just all of us with our kids it just needs to be that since we have to get them ready for school and all of that and other right. other other groups i've heard have chosen to you know have a zoom meeting instead during the school year even though that's not their preferred and favorite thing to do right. at least it gives them a way to prioritize their spiritual life even in the reality of a school work schedule. Right. I mean, that is a reality that we have to contend with, but we have to believe that within our context, God will always make a way if we fight for it, right. if we prioritize it. So, right. And it's, it's one of those things where um, out of habit, and especially because we're moving fast, we can get into the habit of like, oh, I have to put this on the calendar, I have to put this on the calendar, but we're not thinking about why we're doing that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, we just want to remind you that um, um, it's within the relationships that we have within our group where so much of our spiritual growth is going to take yeah, place. That's where it happens. And that's why we want to be able to be, be consistent with our relationships. 
Um, it's not just an organizational structure. It's not just something that, oh yeah, every once in a while I see those people. What we want this to be for all of us is an intentional choice. Like these are the people that I'm going to spiritually go through life with. And we're gonna share life with one another. We're gonna talk about what we're learning. We're gonna encourage one another. Uh, we're going to go to one another for input if we need it. We're gonna have a, a place for confession. Um, and it's the consistency of this. And even if it's, you know, for, for our group, we alternate men one week and women the next week. But that, that consistency of every other week, I know I'm gonna see the guys and we're gonna be able to talk about the things that are going on. Mm -hmm. It builds a great connection with us and it's a sense of safety. So I really wanna urge you to be thinking about that as you're, as you're planning out the fall, that it's this time for spiritual growth within the context of this group. So then how can we find a way to do yes, that? Yes, and it does simplify it because it makes us just focus on the things that are really important. It's not a bunch of random events. Right. It's not a bunch of, div you know, we all have enough events, right? Are you kidding me? <laughs> right. Seems like we all have enough of that. But this is the real important stuff, that time that we're together in the middle of the week. Right. But, um, you know, in addition to that, we're going into, this is a season of holidays. Mm -hmm. And we want to take advantage of this time. Right. I mean, you want to, we want you tonight to be able to talk with you in your group about, well, when do we want to celebrate Christmas together? Right. When do we want to celebrate Thanksgiving together? And for those groups who like it, when do we want to do Halloween? Right. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Right. But maybe you like that, you know, that holiday as well. Or some kind of costume but, party or yeah, thing. Yeah, whatever. Like, what, you're how do. are you going to approach it? But when are we going to do these things? You right. know, you just keep it simple. These are obvious meeting times that you're going to want to celebrate with your group outside of the regular identity group. You know, right. you've got that, those simple times. You've got your, your salt Sundays. Don't overcrowd the schedule. Right. Just... You know, keep it simple to those couple of the things for the holidays, your salt Sundays, your identity group, and you know, God is gonna bless that. Right. We don't need to overcrowd it. We just need to plan it and then sit back and pray for the harvest. Yeah. These are the times where we're gonna invite people in to our group. You know, right. so many there were visitors at our service on Sunday. Yeah. Not, well, not this past Sunday. I'm sure there were visitors this past Sunday. Right. The salt Sundays, the salt but Sundays. I'm talking about two weeks ago. Right. But there were people that had come and they you know, they were just really blown away by the family that was there, that that they felt it. They felt the closeness right. of the family. And you know, we have people around us that are looking for what we have. This is a perfect time of year to invite people into what we have absolutely so plan your schedule then you know get that off of your plate so that then you can enjoy it absolutely yeah. yep so like we said there's it's going to be a really exciting next few yeah. weeks um i think spiritually and in every other way um there's some great things coming up um you know that are, that are on the calendar we've talked about it before with the saturday night live on the 10th david jung is coming yeah. on september the 17th which will be great it's a Saturday night, so please make plans to be there for that. Um, then our, our Sukkot Fall Festival Camp. Um, I really want to encourage you to come to that. If I can just say something about the, the camp here. The point of this, the blessing of this camp, is that we get to spend time yes. with people that we don't normally get to spend time with. Yes. Coming to this camp is a way for the South Orange, uh, Orange County Church to grow together. Not just your, your group in particular, but it's a way to meet people in and around there and deepen our relationships and our love for one another. So I really wanna urge you, uh, registration is almost closed on that. We gotta get that wrapped up. So if you're gonna sign up, please do that this week. That would be super helpful. Um, and then um, on October 9th, then we're gonna have our big regional service mm -hmm. and it's a fall festival. So keep planning we're, your booths. We're inviting all of you at each small group to be able to kind of put together a booth that you wanna to have to celebrate. Um, I'm gonna be uh, doing a lesson on October 2nd, um, kind of teaching about um, this festival, but then how Jesus connects with it and some of the things he said during the festival. And it's just so exciting, it's really, really cool. Um, but then the week before that, a couple weeks before that, we're going to go into just a great time of kind of communal um, repentance and, and looking at what, is, what does God want us to grow in and to change. And uh, so we're going to be able to go through that as a church. So there's a lot coming up that, that's really great. But to help you all prepare for that, I want you, like we said, go through that schedule from now through the end of the year with your group. Look at when the Salt Sundays are. Go ahead and map that out. Figure out when you're going to be able to meet. When are people in town? How do you want to do it? Think through it now before you don't want a week before Thanksgiving to be planning your Thanksgiving dinner. 
Go ahead and plan that now. Like what's the best way for you guys to approach that so that you're intentionally investing in your relationships and your small groups and in the way that God is going to bring us together. Amen. So I hope you guys have a great week. Um, look forward to seeing you hopefully on Labor Day Sunday. I'm going to be preaching this week, this Sunday, uh, about Daniel chapter six, Daniel in the lion's den. That's going to be a lot of fun. And um, so uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Hope you guys have a really great week. Love you.